Hello, my beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleeden Maffei with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep, all while deepening in your connection with your beautiful team of angels who love you so. And if you're new to the podcast, I will share a little bit about myself. I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and an encourager of souls. And what that means is I have the best job ever. I get to help you awaken to your innate connection with your team of angels. We all have them. They are not bound by any religion nor any specific spiritual belief. They are celestial beings and divine messengers of God and have been shining love upon you long before you were born into this world. And so I do angel sessions, one-on-one sessions, where you get to have your own experience of this beautiful divine light where I bring forward wisdom and encouragement and help you connect with the wisdom of your soul. I also offer soul mentoring which provides for ongoing support as you move through a time of transformation or healing. Typically, we start with a 12-week package. And 12 weeks sounds like a long time, but when you are moving through a period of growth, it typically helps get the ball rolling and helps shift how you are holding for your journey in consciousness. So soul mentoring is one of my favorite things to support people with. And then I offer a variety of classes designed to inspire your spirit. I love facilitating groups. Typically, all of my classes are very small in size. Rarely do I have a class that exceeds eight people. So if you do sign up for any of my classes, we'll meet over Zoom. You'll get a lot of intimate time, not only with me, but with the other participants. And if you are seeking support, community, inspiration, and encouragement, I invite you to check out my classes. You'll always find my current offerings on my website, illuminatingsouls.com, where you can also sign up for my daily inspiration email blast. But for now, the angels and I are here to keep you company as you come into a lovely state of rest. If you're new to the concept of sleep podcasts, I have been listening to them for years. They typically are broadcasts that are created to keep you company as you drift off to sleep. So some of the sleep podcasts that I listen to, they might read from public domain books, such as Little Women or Pride and Prejudice or a manual on how to fix a refrigerator. It really can be anything at all. Some of the sleep podcasts write stories, take you on journeys, or share from their lives. This podcast has turned into be a lovely vehicle for me to share with you some of my own stories and experiences. And sometimes I read to you, so it's a little bit of a mashup, but it's a lovely way 
to keep you company while you drift off to sleep, or you might even listen during the day while you do other things. However you choose to partake in this podcast, you have my blessing. As I record this, it is early on a Monday morning, so my week is just getting started, and I can't think of a better way to begin than underneath a blanket fort, recording this episode for you. Because as I begin recording, I feel all of this love washing through. And it's interesting because this week, I just happened to have two new classes starting. So I'm in this place in between. Abraham Hicks has a wonderful term for this place that they call the gap of creation. It is that expanse right before the new dream comes into physical world reality. When it comes to my classes, this is the part that is the hardest for me because it is that expanse of time before I have physical knowledge of who will be joining me for the class. It is not uncommon for me not to know a day or two before the class who will be there because many of my people sign up at the last minute, which I completely understand because typically that's how I sign up for things because I like to steep. I like to contemplate. I don't like to commit to things too soon more often than not. So this place in between, when the promise of the class is whispering through me, but I don't yet have physical world confirmation of who will be there, has in the past been a time of anxiety for me. Not so much anymore. I think I have come into deeper faith of the process And you would think in the work that I do, I would have big faith muscles already developed. And in many parts of my life, I do. But for some reason, when I'm in the place in between, when it comes to my classes, I feel like I'm in my early years, maybe a preteen, early teen and have sent out invitations to a party. And I don't yet know who's going to come. Like, will the popular kids come? (laughs) Will no one come? Who's going to show up? And it seems to be an old line of energy for me. And I thought I would share this with you because I don't want you to ever perceive that I do not move through the full range of human experiences just because I work with the angels. So it's not that I'm really anxious about this week. I'm just more aware of the parts of me, the aspects perhaps that are uncomfortable in this part of the creation cycle. And so I send this part of me a lot of love. And I bring it up in case any aspects within you are also uncomfortable and perhaps feeling a bit anxious right now about something that is in motion where you cannot quite yet see the outcome. And I thought the angels could bring forward some calming, soothing, clearing energies for you, and for me, and for everyone else who is listening to this episode. So I want to invite you to get comfortable in your body, whatever that means for you. If 
you're crawling into bed, just pull the covers up so in the way that you love them, fluffing your pillows. If you're sitting in your favorite chair, just scooch around a little bit so that your back feels supported and your neck feels loose. Your shoulders, just relax a little bit. And I'm going to call the angels in, even though they are already here. But this way, we all acknowledge that we are coming into a beautiful sanctuary of light. Beautiful angels on high. I am so grateful for your invitation that we join you here and now in this beautiful sanctuary of love. Angels, I ask that you send blessings of love to each of our beloved souls listening right now. Angels, I ask that you infuse this broadcast with light so that everyone who hears this message, whenever they hear this message, they will receive your love. And dear ones, just take some nice deep breaths in. And here is the message the angels are bringing forward for you now. When you are on the journey of co-creation, it is not always easy to see how things will transpire The thing to remember is that creation does not only happen in ways that are visible and known to you. You are a vibrational, wise being. And your intentions and prayers and movements ripple far beyond what you can see. And so even if it appears that you are in stillness or that things are not transpiring in ways that you wish them to be, things are still in motion in your favor. So just take a deep breath in and allow this to be so. You are a beloved spark of God and you are creating in a universe filled with love for you. Your path is filled with light and there is goodness flowing to you now. So whatever you are concerned about, we invite you to put it into the light. You might not know exactly what we mean by that, but just accept it as a metaphor that whatever is concerning you, whatever you are questioning, imagine putting it in to divine light or the heart of God. However you conceptualize this, hold it up to the light. There's a beautiful David Wilcox song that I love called Hold It Up to the Light. If you ever get a chance to listen to it, it's wonderful. And especially in the early years of my awakening, when I was still working in my corporate job, I would put the song on as I was driving to work. And I would cry (laughs) because he was speaking of what was in my heart. God, please bless this decision. Feels like my life's at stake. So I hold it up to the light. So perhaps your concerns or worries feel profound 
or maybe they're the just simpler ones, like mine right now feel relatively mild. But it doesn't matter to the light. It doesn't matter if it is your deepest concern or something mild. It's all the same. So we can hold it up to the light. So take a deep breath in. And whatever is in your heart, hold it up to the light. And your angels meet you there. And they amplify the light in your name. And these waves of love start rippling into the timeline of your life. We send the light to all dimensions of time. To all the individuals and experiences involved. You don't have to send the light. The angels send the light. And we help wash clean any patterns of worry, any limiting beliefs, any old stories that you no longer need to hold in consciousness. And the angels help you create space for you to craft a new narrative, one that better supports you and your well-being that reflects your true loving essence and the light of your spirit. You are a blessing here on earth. You are made of stars. You are in on purpose from God, as Reverend Michael Beckwith says. So take a big breath in. And allow yourself to receive the love that is streaming to you. There is a lot of clearing happening right now in this transmission. So just take a big breath in and allow yourself to clear. You don't even have to know what you are clearing. We had these big rains here yesterday. Big, fat droplets of rain and some hail and and my husband and I were out and we had to make our way from the car to the house which is really just a short distance but there was a part of me that was delighted to be in this heavy downpour because it felt so cleansing we don't even need to know what is being cleared It is enough to say, I surrender this up, whatever this is, so that it may be cleared in service to the highest and best good. So take a big breath in and allow the light to wash you clear, to wash you clean to help you reconnect with the beauty of your authentic spirit. To know that you are whole and complete. You are a divine being in human form. And you are precious in this world. So take a big, deep breath in, allowing this healing light to flow to you now. And if you are preparing to drift off to sleep, you have permission to rest. You've done enough for this day. The angels and I are going to keep you company you drift off, or if you plan on staying awake, we're still going to keep you company as I share with you some stories. Okay, so for this episode, I have something really fun to share with you. It's an old TV guide, and I've shared these with you before, 
They really delight me, but this one is really special because it used to belong to my cousin, Joe Bleeden. Now, for those of you who have listened, you may remember that I shared with you about the Bleeden side of my family. And if you haven't heard the episode, you can find it in the episode titled Unexpected Family. So Joe Bleeden was of my dad's generation. And when I moved to Los Angeles, I met him. He was at the time Johnny Carson's publicist. And he had worked a lot in old Hollywood, especially in the television side of things. He used to be Jimmy Durante's publicist. And I became best friends with his daughter, my cousin Susie, who I also share with about in that episode. And for some reason, as we lived our lives together in our 20s and 30s, we often would call each other Bleedin because we spelled our last names differently. It's a whole Ellis Island thing. Um, so we refer to each other as Bleedin. And she listens to this podcast, which delights me so much. And so she shared with me that she had some of her dad's old TV guides and I loved her dad, and I love her. And I said, oh my gosh, if you send them to me, I will record an episode about them. So she sent me this one, and it is from November of 1976. And just as an aside, I just had to re-record that because I said 1776, which really would have been a cool trick if somebody who was completely clairvoyant and psychic had scribbled out a TV guide 200 years before TV basically existed. So this is from 1976. And there are so many pearls of goodness in this issue that I am looking forward to sharing with you. So this particular issue on the cover, it is celebrating that NBC is throwing an all-star 50th birthday party. So it is NBC's 50th anniversary, which means that they went on the air in 1946. Now, in 1976, I would be 14 years old, easy for me to do the math, 14 years old, I would have just graduated from grammar school and I would be two to three months in to my freshman year in high school. So that gives you a sense on where I am in my developmental years. I am certainly still living at home. We may have a color television at this point. I don't quite remember most of our primary TV watching would still be happening in the living room as a family. I was still sharing a room with my sister. I don't think we had a TV in our room. There was a television in the basement that we could watch, but the, the prime viewing spot would be in the living room as a family. There are a lot of cigarette ads in this issue because that was how it was back in the day. They allowed cigarette advertisements, so I will not be sharing those with you. But there is an advertisement here for the Kodak Instant Camera. It says, meet the crank. It's easy and it's fun. It's an instant camera. So you look through the viewfinder you adjust the zooming circle for distance and you shoot. And then it takes the picture and then you crank it and the instant picture comes out. And it's less than $54, which was a lot of money back then. But the idea of having an instant photo was fantastic. You know, now we take so many pictures and they're digital and we show them to each other, but 
Back then, taking photos, you had to wait. It was a mystery. They were on film. And when they were done, you had to, first off, you had to wait for the roll to be done. And then you would take the roll to the drugstore or wherever you dropped it off at. And it would take a few days. And then the pictures would come back to you. So instant cameras were super cool. I don't know that we had one of these. We certainly had an instant Polaroid at some point. But so, meet the crank. The Kodak instant camera is advertised here. There is also a two-page ad for an RCA color track television set. There's a variety of sets here. And also, they're all giant pieces of furniture because TVs were huge back then. And they have both 19-inch and 25-inch televisions. And two of them come with a remote control. Remote controls were brand new back then. You actually had to get up and physically change the channel back then. Life was very different. (laughs) So they don't give any prices, but they are big, colossal pieces of furniture. Just if you were of that age, you will remember this. So there's a two-page ad for RCA color track televisions with no monthly payments until March of 1977. Such a deal. Then there are quite a few articles, which I'm not going to go over with you. This is not in public domain, so I'm not able to read them to you. But there's a big article about the 50th anniversary of NBC and some other things. There is a little snippet about the next week's issue, and it says cable television. It is a 26-year-old infant with growing pains. It's also the subject of heated debate. Um, And it may change TV as we know it, as it did tremendously. But back in 1976, cable was still in its infancy. Certainly in Chicago it was, because we had good antenna reception. It would be years before we got cable TV. So we start off with Saturday morning, which was always cartoon fair. Like that's when we watched the cartoons and I will just let you in on a little snippet of my life back then. So we grew up Jewish and we went to Sabbath school. So, you know, Christian kids would go to Sunday school. We went to Sabbath school and our Sabbath school was always on Saturday mornings, which meant that I did not get to watch cartoons. I did not like this arrangement at all. Our temple also had a Sunday school so some kids could go on Sunday. And I begged my mom to let me go on Sunday so I could watch my Saturday cartoons, which really tells you about my priorities in life. Even back then, I was who I am now with my priorities straight. So, (laughs) but my mom wanted us to go to Sabbath school on Saturdays because then we went to temple services as well. So I would not be watching television here. Although I was 14, I don't know if I was still going on Saturdays and I don't know that I would have been at all into cartoons. But there is an ad here for Puff and Stuff, which I remember as HR Puff and Stuff that I remember watching. So Not back then. I don't think at 14 years old I was watching it. I just mean further back in my history, in the way back machine, I would have been watching HR Puff and stuff. But I'm going to skip over the daytime stuff and and let's go to the the, like seven o'clock slot. So we have the Muppet Show, which was brilliant even back then, like just brilliant. And this one has Florence Henderson as the guest star. So loved the Muppet Show. We would always watch that. Now we get to the good stuff. At 8 p.m., which would be prime time, we have Mary Tyler Moore. Right? Fantastic show. 
So Mary's Aunt Flo sweeps back into town, bantering, wisecracking, and rekindling Lou's romantic interest in her. Would have been brilliant. Something called Holmes and Yo-Yo, which there's no reason we would have been watching it because we were watching Mary Tyler Moore. But also opposite this was Emergency, right? Johnny Gage and Roy DeSoto, which I don't know that I watched so much when it was first run, but I certainly watched it a lot in syndication. Also, though, airing on their independent station, so we would have been living in Chicago, so I wouldn't have seen this, was the musical 1776. Now, I assure you, whenever that aired in Chicago, we would have watched it because my mom loved it. I think we may have even seen it in the theater, and I loved it too. So it was showing in Los Angeles on Channel 9 that Saturday night. So that would have been a hard decision. We would have probably watched 1776. And then at 8.30, if we were watching the CBS block, which we would have been in our home, there was Bob Newhart. So Bob and friend Cliff, played by Tom Poston, try to buy basketball tickets from two women in a bar and are promptly arrested on charges of soliciting. Right? Hilarious hijinks ensue. And this is the original Bob Newhart with Suzanne Pluchette as Emily when he was the therapist, not the innkeeper that came later. At nine o'clock, we have All in the Family. Of course, we were watching All in the Family. The Stivics argue with the bunkers. Like that's every episode, right? The Stivics argue with the bunkers over who would make better guardians for Joey if something should happen to Mike and Gloria. So Joey had already been born at that point. That was their son. So we would have been watching that because my parents also liked All in the Family. Playing opposite, though, it was Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch pose as dancers to trip up an extortion ring operating out of a plush Hollywood dancing studio. So which means that this was probably some kind of ballroom dancing versus go-go dancing, if it was a, if it was a dancing studio. Um, oh, Veronica Hamill's in this, a young Veronica Hamill, who was then be on NYPD Blue. I really liked Starsky and Hutch. I think it used to be on Friday nights or something, though, because I do remember watching it. But given the one television situation, we would have certainly been watching All in the Family. Also, on opposite of that was Hee Haw, which I don't think I've ever seen a full episode of that. We would have certainly been watching All in the Family. So, Alice is on at 9.30. And then, what comes on at 10 o'clock is sheer happiness. Because it is the Carol Burnett Show. And this has Ken Berry, who sings and dances to Love Stolen and joins the regulars in a mini musical based on the lyrics of John E. Mercer, highlighting the comedy is a two-act spoof of the 1945 melodrama Mildred Pierce with Carol in the Joan Crawford role and Vicki Lawrence playing her vicious daughter. Beautiful. We absolutely would have watched that. And then at 11.30, Saturday Night Live is on. It's just called Saturday Night, and this must be its first or second season. And listen to this. Paul Simon hosts and George Harrison is the special guest. I mean, how amazing is that? I'm sure that this was a brilliant episode. I don't know that I would have been watching it back then. I don't think I was that woke, but but I certainly would have watched it in reruns. And, and here's something that's super important. You had to watch it if you wanted to see it because we had no VCRs back then. The internet did not exist. You know, now you hear something is funny and you pull it up on YouTube. You couldn't do that back then. 
So it says here that George Harrison is going to sing Here Comes the Sun and Homeward Bound. Oh, it says, it says on tape, Simon and George Harrison sing Here Comes the Sun and Homeward Bound. Okay, that must exist on YouTube somewhere. And then later in the evening, if you're going to stay up that late, Don Kirshner's rock concert. How many of you remember Don Kirshner? And this is Harry Chapin, Tom Chapin, and Steve Chapin. Oh, that must have just been brilliant. I loved Harry Chapin. And now we're on to Sunday night, which in our house meant 60 Minutes. I have no idea what was airing on 60 Minutes, but I guarantee you that was on in our house. And also on this evening was the 50th anniversary of NBC showing. So that was a big deal. We probably were watching that, I'm sure. But if we weren't watching that, we had the option to watch Sonny and Cher. Now, I loved Sonny and Cher, who didn't back then. And the guests are Red Fox, Tom Jones, and Shields and Yarnell, who, as I recall, were mimes, or one of them was a mime or something. So Sonny and Cher, but opposite of that was Six Million Dollar Man, which I loved. But I think I mostly watched that in reruns. Um, and the movie Godspell was being aired, which I don't recall that I would have watched back then, but I would have probably watched it a few years after that. Also on was Kojak. We, we watched that. My dad liked Kojak. So there's a Kojak episode. And then that's really about it for Sundays. Okay, now we come to Monday afternoon. Now the afternoons were cool because you had Mike Douglas, right? And Dinah Shore. So there's an ad here for Mike, which would be Mike Douglas. Big, It's his big anniversary celebration. And it continues with flashbacks, Hollywood star close-ups, and famous guests. Also, though, what they are promoting, one of the stations is promoting, is Medical Center. And the headline says, Today, falling in love endangers a patient's life. And there's a picture of Chad Everett, who was so unbelievably handsome back then. But I don't believe that I would have watched Medical Center. We would have probably been watching one of the talk shows. Actually, I mean, I would have been in school let's get real. I would have been in school. And when I came out of school, I don't know if I would have watched television, but if I had, it probably would have been one of the talk shows if somebody interesting was on it. Okay. And, and regarding Mike Douglas, this is a special aside for my cousin Susie, because she's probably the only one who is going to understand why this is so brilliant And I'll explain it to the rest of you in just a second. So, as I said, we call each other Bleedin. So this is for her. Bleedin. (laughs) Bleedin. You're never going to guess who Mike Douglas's co-star is this week. And you won't guess, so I will tell you. It is Shecky Green. How brilliant is that, Shecky Green? Okay. Now, for the rest of you, I have to tell you why this is so funny. So Shecky Green, most of you will probably not know who he is, was a comedian. And he was big, like, through the 50s up through the 70s, for sure. And Shecky Green was the kind of guy that her dad, Joe, would have known. I don't know for sure that Joe knew him, but he absolutely would have been the kind of guy that Joe would drop into a conversation like, yeah, I had breakfast with Shecky. <laughs> Shecky Green had opened, I just looked this up, so, so you know, I'm not retaining this knowledge in my brain, but I just pulled up the wiki on Shecky Green. And in 1975, he was opening for Dean Martin in Las Vegas. So he also had a huge career as a comic in Vegas. And Joe for many years was also a publicist at the big hotels in Vegas. So I don't know why Shecky Green being Mike Douglas's co-host in this particular TV guide 
feels like it is a hello from heaven. I don't know why. I just think, of course, it's Shecky Green. That just makes total sense, doesn't it? (laughs) So I feel like we're having brunch with your dad. So I just have to share that with all of you. So the other thing that is airing in the afternoon, they're airing Singing in the Rain, which is amazing to be able to watch that. Although at 14 years old, I wouldn't have cared. Okay, so so basically coming home from school, you could choose from Mike Douglas with Shecky Green, Marcus Welby, Medical Center, or Singing in the Rain. The me who I am now for sure would choose Singing in the Rain, for sure. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead now. There's lots of different programs that are in syndication, being shown, Bonanza, Wild West, Bewitched. So all of these things are being shown. Star Trek. Oh, also let me tell you who's on Dinah, Dinah Shore, for those of you who do not know, another panel talk show. She has Carol Burnett and Beverly Sills, Edie Gourmet and Rock Hudson. That's a fantastic lineup. And this is promoting Carol Burnett and Beverly Sills later in the week have a special together, which I'll get to. So they're all on Dinah Shore. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Okay, so now let's come to prime time and see what, oh, you know what we get to watch? You guys, 8 p.m., a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is on. Okay, for sure we would have watched that. Because again, you didn't have video cassette recorders. You couldn't watch this a thousand times on VHS or DVD or YouTube Once a year, you got to watch it. And if you missed it, you had to wait until next year. We for sure would have been watching a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, even at 14 years old. Airing opposite of that was Little House on the Prairie, which I did watch, but I wouldn't have been watching it at that point. I would have been watching Charlie Brown. Bewitched was also on. Uncle Arthur, Paul Lind, who was brilliant in that show, brings home the wrong kind of bunny. Okay, I have no idea what that's about, but I'm sure it was hilarious. There, There is an insert here for the RCA music service, right? Six tapes or records for only five cents. And they have the eight track cassettes label out all stacked up. So for any of you that also grew up with eight track cassettes, I don't know how many for you are songs burned in your memory with that little glitch as the the track shifts in the middle of a song. Let's see some of our options. If we wanted to sign up, we could have Jefferson Starship, Dolly Parton, Barry Manilow, Jim Croce, Carpenters, The Monkees, little aside, I used to work for Michael Nesmith. John Denver, John Travolta. So this means that Welcome Back Cotter was already a thing. Helen Reddy. Okay, so we certainly could have found six that we wanted for a nickel. But back to television. At nine o'clock, we had Maud. I don't know that we watched a lot of Maud. I think her comedy was not my parents' cup of tea. Captain and Tennille had their variety show on, which I we may have watched. I don't know. I, I mean, I certainly watched some episodes of it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Merv Griffin at night. Okay. You have to listen to this lineup. David Soule, who for those of you who do not know, he played Hutch on Starsky and Hutch and take a deep breath. All of you who were in your preteen years right around here, the Bay City Rollers. Oh, those boys were so cute. And many of us had crushes on them. So that would have been a phenomenal episode. And on Friday, (laughs) okay, wait, I'll go back to the other days. But on Friday, he has Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner, which would have been great. Thursday, George Burns and Ginger Rogers. Fantastic. Wednesday, Sean Connery and Charo. A weird mashup for sure. And Tuesday was Richard Chamberlain and Tom Halleck. I don't know who Tom Halleck is, but I loved Richard Chamberlain. And there there were two movies on 
um, one of them is Evil Knievel, played by George Hamilton, who plays the famed daredevil motorcyclist. Well, there you go. All right, we'll keep going. And just if you were wondering, on Mike Douglas on Tuesday, um, of course, in addition to Shecky Green as the co-host, David Carradine, John Travolta, and director Hal Ashby. I would have probably watched because of John Travolta. At that age, I would have thought he was cute. Oh, Phil Donahue had Shirley Temple Black on. That would have been interesting. Okay, also then on Tuesday night, there's some kind of special with Nadia Komenich, who was the gymnast. So this would have been right around the time that she had won the medal in the Olympics. The headline says, meet the little girl who won five Olympic medals in everybody's heart. Nadia from Romania with love. And the host is Flip Wilson. So, so that's an interesting combination. I probably would have watched that because like everybody else, I was completely enchanted with her. There's an ad um, for candy of Junior Mints and Pom Poms, and there's a big headline that says, Be on TV with the Fonz. Enter the Big Happy Days Sweepstakes. Well, okay. You could go to Hollywood and be on Happy Days and probably eat a lot of Junior Mints. What's not to love about that prize? but it's a reminder of how big Happy Days was back then. And Happy Days happens to be on that day, opposite of Nadia. So I don't know what I would have watched. I was so confident in my choice of Nadia, but maybe I was watching Happy Days because I liked that show. So in this episode, school reporter Richie tests his talents as a muckraker by digging into possible scandal in the operation of the high school cafeteria. Okay. There's also a show called Baba Black Sheep, which, as I recall, was, I think, about World War II or something like that, which maybe we would have watched once in a while for my dad. And then, because it was um, a doubleheader night with Happy Days, of course, followed by Laverne and Shirley. Shlemiel, Shlemazel, right? So Laverne and Shirley resolve to trade their bottle-capping jobs for careers as high-fashion models. Would have been hysterical. And then you know what comes on? MASH, for sure. For certain, MASH was on in our house. So an awesome MASH episode. Also, Policewoman is on with Angie Dickinson. Then One Day at a Time is on. And then at 10 o'clock, You get to choose between Switch with Eddie Albert and Robert Wagner, which my mom loved. So we would have probably watched that. Opposite of Family, which I loved because it had Christy McNichol. And Christy McNichol really felt like she would have been a friend. Like she was my age and she was super cool. And so I would watch just about anything that she was in. Okay, on Wednesday, listen to this lineup. I promise you this is what I was watching. 8 o'clock on Channel 7, which is ABC, Bionic Woman. For sure, Bionic Woman. Jamie becomes a miracle-working nun when she tracks an international espionage ring to a convent. You know, anytime you have the main character pretending to be a nun you know it's going to be good, right? And then we've got Beretta. And it says, quote, mother decides Beretta must die. Okay, I have no idea what that is. I don't care. But I would would have been watching it because there was a cockatoo. (laughs) I loved his cockatoo. Fred, right? Oh my God. Was the cockatoo's name Fred? I think so. And if I'm right, I'm terrified that I know that. Okay, and then we've got Charlie's Angels. You know I was watching that. And it's still with Farrah Fawcett, so she has not yet left the series. Angel becomes pin-up doll to nail killer. I would have absolutely been watching all three of those, much to my mother's chagrin. 
And I'm not even going to tell you what was on opposite of it because it didn't matter. That was all that existed on television for me that night. Okay, now we're on Thursday, but this is Thanksgiving. So it's all about the Macy's Day Parade and the balloons, which for sure I would have been watching. That's one of my delightful memories of getting up in my pajamas and going downstairs and watching the parade every year. On prime time, we had a special Walton's Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving story centers on John Boy, who is injured in a freak accident during holiday preparations. My husband loves the Waltons, just as an aside. It's one of his comfort shows because everybody is so nice to each other. So we have watched a lot of Waltons in our house. I always like to find the programs that make him happy. It looks like there's a Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2 special on. I don't know that we would have been watching that if I was 14 years old. Probably we would have been watching the Waltons. And then at the 10 o'clock slot, this is the Sills and Burnett. So Beverly Sills, who was an opera singer, and Carol Burnett had a special. For positive, we were watching this because my mom loved opera and loved Beverly Sills and Carol Burnett. So I almost have some vague memories of watching this. So they are performing at the New York City's Metropolitan Opera House. The show begins with comedy as Carol and Beverly compare their vocal ranges in the song Only an Octave Apart. Yeah, for sure we watched that. It would have been lovely. And, you know, something else I should mention, if you were not going to sleep after the final primetime show, because typically in our house, my parents would stay up to watch the news at 10 o'clock and go to sleep at 1030. Nowadays, I go to bed at eight. So, you know, all of this would be TiVo for me because I do TiVo. Is TiVo considered old school now or is it still a current technology. (laughs) I use TiVo. But the options would be a rerun of Love American Style. How can you go wrong with that? And Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was on, which was a little too sketchy for me, I think, at that age, but it was a big thing back then. Okay, now we're going to Friday. And Charlotte's Web is on. The Charlotte's Web, the the cartoon Charlotte's Web is on. And that was one of my very favorite books growing up. I don't remember loving the movie, but I might have watched the movie just sort of as an ode to one of my favorite books. Also airing on Friday night, The Marx Brothers, Monkey Business, which I didn't like them back then. Uh, I didn't see the genius of them because I was so young and I was into things like the Bay City Rollers for my entertainment, but now I would appreciate the genius of monkey business. There is an all-star tribute to John Wayne airing. Um, Frank Sinatra is the host. I would not have watched that because I was not a John Wayne fan. I don't know if my father would have been interested, but he would have totally lost the TV lottery, because God bless my dad. He was a gentle guy and was never going to fight to watch something he wanted to watch. He would go downstairs and probably watch there. The Rockford Files was on, and, and we liked the Rockford Files a lot, so we would have watched that. And there's a Dean Martin, I don't know, Celebrity Roast or something like that also on, which again, we would not have watched. And now we get to the television crossword section of the TV guide because we are done with the TV listings. And I just have to tell you that it is done in pen. No mistakes. Because Joe is great at crossword puzzles, as is his daughter Susie. So Michael Douglas's replacement is 39 across. Richard Hatch. I wonder if that was the streets of San Francisco both very handsome men, as I recall. So I know almost none of these answers. One of the questions is Mr. Troop, 
And the answer is Bobby. I don't know who that is. So just so you know, Bladen, if you're still listening, your dad did the TV crossword puzzle in pen and got them all right, of course, because he was so good at those. And then next week's TV guide features Starsky and Hutch. Again, I had a huge crush on Hutch. Not David's soul. I mean, I think it's important sometimes the crush is on the character, not the actor. So, because you know, when you watch a show like Starsky and Hutch, you have to kind of have a mini crush on somebody. I was always looking for a mini crush on someone if I was going to watch a TV show. Back then, 14 years old, crushes were still a big thing for me. So, so that was the week that was for Thanksgiving week of 1976. What 14 year old Laurel would have been watching with her family. Good TV, man. Beverly Sills and Carol Burnett, for sure, we would have watched that. And um, all the other good TV. So here is the week that was. Sending love across the timeline of all of our lives. Here's to all the good and bad television we've ever watched. I am somebody who loves the genre of television. No apologies. So thank you, Susie, to my cousin Susie for sharing this issue of TV Guide with me and with us all. I will pop it in the mail back to you pronto. And to all the rest of you, I send you love. I am so grateful for the gift of you. You are precious in this world. So I invite you to have a good rest. And I look forward to connecting again soon. Thank you so much. I am deeply grateful for you.